Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. And after a two week hiatus on Mondays, uh, we are back with the Margaret Rita Monday Meetup podcast. Uh, two weeks ago, I had some scheduling conflicts. Uh, last week was a holiday, so I, I was lazy. Uh, and this week, I am uh, so, you know, pleased to bring on uh, the guest that I have with us this week. Uh, I was probably a little over like a year and a half or so ago, um, you know, kind of commented and liked one of my videos and, you know, was just like, yeah, man, I like, I like what you do. I like how you think about movies. Um, I do reviews too, if you'd ever want to like check those out. And I'm not, I don't rush when I get comments like that all the time, but every once in a while I'll kind of check out if it seems legit. And when I saw the name, the Greek geek, I was like, Oh, I'm definitely going to click on this guy's channel. Um, and I really dug what he was doing uh, from his end of reviews. So we kind of sparked up a little bit of one of those social media uh, online friendships uh, that spans the whole globe, man. My man is on the other side of the world for me right now in Australia. Uh, I am so pleased to bring on to the show, the Greek geek himself, uh, Paul Katsalos, how are you doing, sir? Did I screw up the name again? We, no, by no, the way, no, 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 that's good. We, by, by the way, <laughs> I said, my teachers used to say. So. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I <bet>. solace. <laughs> <laughs> I like to try to make it roll, uh, everything roll off the tongue. Um, and I say again, because me and Paul just had an entire conversation for about 20 minutes that we thought we were having with you guys, and I didn't hit the record button. So we've backed it up and in an episode that involves all sorts of time and space continuum type stuff. It's Saturday for me. It's Sunday for Paul. For you right now, it's Monday. Like, it's a happy <laughs> day to begin with. We, we screwed up the recording and now we are back. Um, so before we dive into what we're talking about today, um, I hit up Paul after I saw uh, Chris Hemsworth's newest Netflix movie, uh, The Extraction. Um, and was like, dude, the action like in the movie is really tight. Uh, I I'd be interested to see like what you have to say. Um, and then I think because the character action wise is really, you know, solid and a lot of people like they're, they're some might have been either Netflix or the movie's Twitter account put like John Wick versus Tyler Rake. And like the John Wick account responded with like, Are, is this a serious question? Because like, come on. But, and we'll talk about when we get into the movie, but when you see the action, like it's one of those ones that pops in a way that it makes you think of things like John Wick. And you're like, huh, I wonder if Chris Hemsworth kept doing, you know, this character for a prolonged period of time. Could he be one of the best action movie characters of all time? So me and Paul are not only going to talk about extraction, but then we're going to jump over and do a top 10, uh, our top 10 personal all time action characters from action movies. Um, but before we get to that, Paul, introduce yourself to the folks at home. Let them know uh, who you are, where you're from, uh, and what it is that you do over on YouTube. Hello, I am the Greek geek because I am 50% Greek and 100% a geek. And I have an Australian accent, so that's a bit confusing for everybody. <laughs> I am over in Australia. I have a YouTube channel that I call The Greek Geek. I like to talk about science fiction, fantasy, monster movies, superhero movies, and I am partial to action movies as well. So Corey has been very kind to invite me onto his show yeah. and we're going to discuss our favorite action heroes of all time, top 10. Yeah. And we're going to discuss the newest action film to be released. Well, got released a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, I should, I yeah. should say rather. Um, Extraction. Yeah. So what did you think uh, of the movie? What were your first uh, takes? Well, the action was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> As so we were discussing so earlier. Everything else was just pretty good pretty okay um as we were saying before like with tyler his motivation like you brought brought up a lot more with his motivation i thought like it was hanging on by a bit by oh, a string I, as to why he is helping this kid i had to build a we lot should of probably that say myself. spoilers earlier oh, yeah. this yes, time before right. I we, go we, right we, into we didn't it. do that <laughs> yes we, we are gonna be spoiler heavy when we talk about anything today so if you haven't seen any of the movies that we're talking about get out of here go watch them come back uh, I'll, I'll put some sort of like chapter markers in there so it's easier to find where we're talking about things. But don't let us spoil things for you. But we, because we've seen it, we're going to spoil the crap out of these things. Um, and like you said, like I think the motivation is hanging on by a thread. I think I built a lot of things like to add onto it to make it work. Because um, yeah. it yeah, is. You did. I'm just like, it doesn't work. And then you're like, well, he does have that scene with that kid. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, shit, I forgot about that. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's also super fresh in my mind because I watched it again today. Um, but yeah, yeah, like it's it's one of these things where it's like early in the movie, like you see this kid get kidnapped. He's the son of one of two like rival Indian gang, uh, like lords heads, king yeah. kings, you know, whatever yeah, you want to call him. This guy's him. dad is in jail. Other guy kidnaps this kid. So Hemsworth is. You find out like clearly ex-military he goes in and does these types of things like rescues people so he has a price he says cool i'll go do this and like halfway through saving this kid he finds out that like the payment never came in everything kind of went sideways yet he sticks with this kid the whole movie and it's like well it's a movie sure but it, it seemed like the only motivation that you could really kind of pick up on at all was that they kept flashing to the fact that he had some sort of trauma with his kid and in this conversation that i mentioned to paul before where he's in the bedroom uh, after like one of these long days, like he's killed a whole <laughs> a very long day. <laughs> uh, he's talking to the kid and they kind of have this moment. And it was probably one of the strongest writing parts of the movie, like this little conversation. Cause it did give you a little bit into his background. You understand that his son, I think had lymphoma and died, but because he was struggling rather than being home with him, Hemsworth's character, Tyler Rake, decided to go back to war voluntarily um, to go on another tour so he wouldn't have to be there to deal with it. So it's like you kind of get this, like, maybe this guilt feeling uh, that maybe is why he wants to protect this kid because he couldn't protect his own. But like I said, I built all that up in my head. <laughs> like, the movie doesn't lay it out that well. And it, I, I think when you watch it, it really is o only being held on by a thread. But we're not really here for a ton of story in this. Yes. We're here yeah, for a lot right. of kick-ass action. And what did you, what, what, like what popped for you from the action standpoint? Cause I think the action, like we said, is really, really strong. Yeah. Really strong, really well choreographed and shot. Uh, my biggest issues with a lot of action movies, well, Western action movies, I should say, is that it's shot from a very close kind of perspective, yeah. like close quarters perspective. And there's so many cuts like I am really into martial arts and I've watched a lot of Hong Kong cinema and martial arts movies from a lot of Eastern countries and they take like a white, like a further away shot, yep. a wider shot of it. And it's like more, more takes longer takes with the actions, with their hand and hand yeah. fighting. She want to see it. I stuff. love that. Yeah. Yeah. So especially with a lot of, not all of them, of course, like, like, as we said before with John Wick, that has been very well oh, yeah. choreographed by someone cool. who has choreographed for a lot of movies. Yeah. Um, so, and that's like the way you mentioned that, like I immediately started thinking of uh, Iko Uwe, uh, the guy from the raid. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Because he was in his first like big action movie here in America was mile 22 with Mark Wahlberg. And they cut that was action. He in that? Oh yeah. He's in it you wouldn't know because they cut his action sequences like someone who doesn't know how to do action sequences where mm. you're in this handheld tight quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving so fast. Like if somebody fucks up, you're not going to notice because they're moving so quick. And I'm sitting yeah. there, I'm like, this guy is like one of the greatest martial artists in the entire world. Like, like you said, the raid movies, they go on that wide perspective and it's like mm -hmm. the, the camera moves and stuff so that it's cinematic. But whenever they're what, whenever it cuts to something, you don't feel like you miss them do any of the choreography. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. A lot of Eastern action movies, like you kind of pointed out, pre John Wick, you didn't get that. It was more like Jason Bourne, where it's mm. like you're right in there, kind of nitty gritty, and you're, you you understand what's happening in the choreography, but you do feel like you kind of miss beats here and there. Yeah, yeah. What did we get in this movie as far as stuff like that? Well, as everyone keeps comparing it to John Wick, <laughs> so yeah. I guess we'll do the same. <laughs> it's very much the same kind of thing. And as I said before, like comparing this to John Wick, John Wick, I feel is like very precise, like a knife. He yeah. takes every, everyone out, even stealthily. He's precise and just does it not cleanly, but takes them out very efficiently. And yeah. Tyler, what was it? Rake, Rake. I think it's the other is Rake. a sledgehammer. <laughs> Yeah, oh, punching yeah. people, kicking people, being able to throw them, and they'll go through walls, and they'll go th flying. It is Chris Hemsworth. He is a very beefy man, cake. Yeah. So, of course, he'd be able to do that. <laughs> well, as I, like I said to you before, like my favorite things he does is when he kicks people in this movie. Like the force in which their bodies flip or fly through the air and then hit the ground. You're just like, oh my god! And it is. It's much more like everything about what Keanu does with his choreography, the way Stahel Chad Stahelski, who was um, 
his stunt double and choreographer for the matrix has been with him for all these and directs the john wick movies very precise uh very fast you know hand-to-hand gun shooting all of that stuff much like you said kind of like a knife where hemsworth it's the same style like when you're watching you you get that vibe but when he hits a motherfucker (laughs) they they don't get up like at all yeah. ever. There's, there's a point where a guy gets like thrown into him he catches him he spins him around and breaks a dude's neck in half like a, a oh yeah by i really should have already watched that before oh. we did this it, like it like i like i said even on the second watch today i was like i forgot he did that like he straight up uses a human being as a baseball bat and another human being's head is the baseball like yeah. it's so physical and ferocious and it fits perfectly because whether you you're you're actively thinking it or not our first impression of Hemsworth is Thor and he is and he he embodies that character so well that when you see him you're like he is Thor so to see him in an action movie where he's punching people and they're flying I'm like well this fits him he's the god of thunder he's not the god of thunder but it works (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, you. Over here in Australia, Chris Hemsworth was on like a TV soap called Home and Away. Never mm. watched it. Never watched it or anything <laughs> like that. But that's that's where he was on. The, you know, he was on. I'm not shocked to hear that. Like you would be surprised the amount of like big name stars and actors like over here start on our soap operas. Like yeah. so many actors. That's it's, I guess it's the perfect training ground because you're filming so much so all the time. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, you see a lot of people come over from the soap operas. And yeah, it's like, I used to give my mom, sh- I used to give my mom shit about soap operas. Cause I was like, Oh mom, you're watching your stories or whatever. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, Corey, but like, we'll watch a movie. And she'll be like, he started in a soap opera. Oh, she was in a soap <laughs> opera. Oh, he was in a soap <laughs> opera. I'm like, all right, I'll stop talking crap about the soap opera. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> starts there. There's like another soap opera that we have over here that's called Neighbors, and my girlfriend absolutely loves it. And she oh, yeah. and like we were watching something, and she'd be like, "Oh yeah, that person used to be in Neighbors. Oh, that person used to be in Neighbors." <laughs> I'm just like, "What the? F- what?" Because yeah, I don't I, really watch it. I've yeah, actually no, lately I've kind of sat down and watched it. <laughs> I'm a bit ashamed to admit. Hey, that. Hey, you're anyway. try, trying to figure out who the up and coming stars are. That's yes, ex- exactly. Research, that's, that's, it's, it's research. research. <laughs> it's research. That's all it is. <laughs> Um, so I think the other, the thing that pops, I think the most in this movie though, uh, speaking of extraction is that 12 and a half minute Mm. sequence that looks like one camera take. Love it. Mind blow. Like it's one of those things where it's like, I'm watching this movie. I'm like, what's something they haven't done in John wick. And then this thing happens and it like, it starts with a car chase that goes for like a couple minutes. That's wild. Then there's this crazy sequence through like an apartment complex where he's like kicking the shit out of people he's shooting the shit out of people he's like i I, I said to you before like the thing that pops in that moment is like the kid gets away and they get separated we follow the kid and you come through a door and hemsworth's right there blows the bad guy away and then fights like three more dudes and he's like running out of ammo and he reloads like off of his vest (laughs) and then just keeps going i'm like oh wow yeah like whether he has a stunt double or not like you know that whole bit is him because his face is on screen the whole time. You're like, yeah. Chris Hemsworth brought it, man. And like, yeah, you can really tell when they've like gone out of their way to learn oh, yeah. that stuff and make it believable. Well, as believable, as I don't believable know how believable can. it yeah. is to actually reload your gun <laughs> like that. I mean, if you're a professional, maybe it's real realistic. Maybe. It's, it's a movie. <laughs> I, it's just stuff like that that you don't see too often. It just and makes I- it that step above regular action movies yeah and it's like it's something i've noticed specifically in action uh whether it's superhero movies or regular action movies like people like keanu reeves and tom cruise keep pushing the envelope and do all of their own work that it makes like all of these other big name actors go well i want to do all of my work like i think the most amazing thing in John Wick 3 is watching Halle Berry kick the shit out of people for 10 minutes yeah. and it's her the whole time like they they go out of their way to make sure you can see her face or uh, Atomic Blonde with Charlize Theron where she's like doing that yeah. John Wick stuff and it's her the whole and you're like you just appreciate it so much more when you know the person's in there and people like yeah, exactly kind of pushed action to that point where it's like well if that's the standard then we gotta do it and I thought Hemsworth showed up and was 
better than I would have even expected him to be in, in that tight quarters hand to hand stuff when he's not knocking dudes heads almost off of their body with human beings. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's great. Um, oh, there was something I was going to say. I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably it'll probably come back to me. It's probably probably my fault. I I, I tend to I tend to ramble quite a, <laughs> a little know, bit. You know this. Um, uh, uh, that's so good. But it's yeah, like uh, I just think overall, like the movie, it, like that sequence makes it pop because like I go, I've never seen like a one shot, twelve plus minute take of an action sequence work that well. I mean, granted, nineteen. 17 did an entire yeah. movie like that yeah. and you're like wow but when you when the action is so high octane like yeah a good war movie 1970 this is like something else where it's like fast paced things are happening and yeah the way they move the camera around even in that just that sequence like everything action related looks great it pops it, it works the gun action is great yeah it sounds um, great as well yeah oh like, yeah the, when he's like punching and kicking people like I don't know how to explain it, but you, there's in movies like this, you can tell that it feels like it has weight to it. Like you see action movies, they're throwing punches and everything. And like, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of weight behind it. Yeah. It feels overly choreographed, but this, like you, you, you hear it, you feel yeah. it when oh, someone's yeah. getting their neck that snap. It just uh, like increases the immersion with the movie as well. It just, great that made me think of something else the the fatigue factor and that's another i think yeah it's like a john wick thing too because like my dude gets hit by a car in two and then he run limps for two straight movies like yeah in you know again that's what the bar is and you get that here like when you watch this action you feel the fatigue that hemsworth has like toward the end of the movie he can barely walk or stand because he's been shot so many fucking times and he like he looks bad but he's still the man at what he's got to do and when yeah the specifically like in the middle of that 12 minute stretch where he takes on the other guy who's trying to save this kid, but they don't realize, mm. I guess at that point that they're on the same team. They have this I like, love, unbe- I like that guy. <laughs> oh dude, he was, he's awesome. That was the other thing too. Like the other supporting actors that are in action kind of roles or stuff, uh, him, David Harbor for the brief, like five minutes he's in there. Like they all yeah. came, they, they all came and they brought it and like they added to the movie. Um, but that sequence with that dude, when they're like fighting with the knives and stuff and like Hemsworth, they both just fell out of a building. Like they're staggering yeah. around and it's like the adrenaline kicks up cause you have to, yeah. but then you get to the end of that and you see them, they're like lying like, on the ground. Yeah. Like the <laughs> fatigue the- hits them. And that's the shit that makes me go. Yes. Like if you want me to love an action movie, that's the stuff I need to see. Cause like, yeah, you could be the Terminator and you're a machine and you just like never slow down. But like, if you're fighting, you want to see those, like surges of energy because your adrenaline yeah. comes up and then those crashes of like, fuck, I got like nothing left. Like yeah. that yeah. makes it so much more believable, especially when you're already suspending the disbelief because he's punching people through walls. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, the fatigue factor is very like, yeah, you're right. They got that really well done as well. Like when yeah. they're both flying on the ground and they're kind of just like, like going, Oh fuck, I just fell out of a building or got run over by a car, whatever happened. And like, they see the gun like yeah. on, yeah, yeah. on the ground and just like, Oh crap. Gotta yep. get that before the other guy gets that. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But like in, I was, ha- we, what's the name of the, uh, that other actor that Red, Randeep Huda? Uh, the uh, guy that plays like the ex special forces guy that tries to get the kid as well, who eventually yes. is on the same side. The guy yes. we were talking about Sa- before. Saju. Yeah. It's just that, like, I liked, cause like he takes down, Tyler takes down like all the other like cannon fodder down so easily. And then he like yeah. meets someone that like his kind of match. Yeah. And, like, they're an even match. And I'm just like, Oh good. They're trading blows. They're getting blows on each other. One gets the upper hand and the other one gets the upper hand and they're both down on the ground. And they're trying to just beat the crap out of each other. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you need, like you need that in a movie like this. Mm-hmm. where it's like i don't want yeah. chris hemsworth to have an easy time trying to save this kid and escaping this city that's being locked down by like every cop and bad guy known to yeah. mankind um yeah and then uh, and i mentioned david harbour he he makes a quick brief appearance and he even gets a little bit of an action sequence and again is like somebody bit. who i love the relationship that him and hemsworth have in the movie like i hate that it goes the route that it ends up going because it almost felt Such like a, a cliche yeah. I've seen oh that in yeah. So many action movies, like, oh, I'm gonna meet up with this friend. We're old friends. Whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. And it's then, 
and then he betrays him just like yeah i saw that coming <laughs> oh yeah but it was like i was like it was disappointing because if you were to do more movies i'd be like oh i'd want more david harbour in there because one i love david harbour and two like mm. I, their chemistry was great it felt like a younger brother older brother type thing mm. and then david harbour like gets the upper hand on hemsworth to the point where he's going to kill him and then the kid shows up and is holding yeah. the gun and puts him down and it's like especially in a movie where like coming off that is that whole sequence we just talked about like he falls out of a building he's beat to shit already and david harbour is not a small man like he should yeah. be in trouble in that type of yeah. fight and like yeah those are the things that help action movies just feel more believable make you buy into the realism and allows you to i think s- afford the movie to suspend disbelief here and there because so many other times it feels so grounded and real yeah yeah but he David Harbour, he mentions his wife, which I didn't really understand. Like, yeah. I've got to go um, say goodnight to my wife or whatever. Yeah, and just leave. And I didn't understand why he said that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that... I, th- I think what happened is he goes and sells Hemsworth out. Like, because when he comes... Right. Back, like, you got to kill this kid or turn him in now or, like, we're all screwed. And he's like, what did yeah. you do? I, I just I thought mean, it was I, bizarre. It, just it, like, it, hey... I, I'm going to take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, and those are the things in the writing where I was like, when you're not in all the action and stuff, it's okay. Like it's, it gets, a, it gets by just enough where, but there are moments where you're kind of like, you scratch your head and you're like, wait, why, why would you go rescue this guy from a sewer, bring him to a house? And then it's like, Oh, by the way, I just gotta go kiss my wife. Good night. And then I'll come back. Like, yeah. Things like that I'm were so- just kind of weird. I'm surprised that Hemsworth just went, what? Just doesn't say like, hey, he doesn't have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Something's up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I think on the overall with this one is you have someone like Hemsworth who's just so charismatic and he suits these types of roles so well that you're just here to ride with him. And when you get introduced to the action being what it is, you're like, I don't give a fuck what the story is about anymore, mm. man. Like, just show me more ass kicking because it's... Mm great um and it's not just hand to hand like even the the gun action i thought was was pretty on point to the point where it's like you know i I think it was either netflix or it was extractions twitter like tweeted out like tyler rake versus john wick who would win and then the john wick twitter like came back in and was like is this a real question like yeah no i don't think there's any doubt in my mind that if they ran into each other jw's taking home the dub like taking home the win Mm. but it would be a fight I would want to see. And it makes you wonder if you get more movies with Tyler Rake, which despite being shot through the neck and the body so many times where it looked like he was dying when he falls off a bridge into water, we see a fuzzy figure in the back at the very last shot that might be him eight yeah. months later. So we could get more movies. And if we did, could he realistically be somebody that might fight into a top 10 scenario? And I think me and Paul would probably agree that right now off one movie, I couldn't put him in the top 10 of like greatest action uh, characters of all time. Uh, well, it depends on how much of an impact they have on you. Like even when, when we later, when we discuss um, our top 10 favorite action heroes, a couple of mine have only been in one movie. Oh, like, they, they're like, they leave that much of an impact on me. So, that's fair. So do, do you think so, Rake left that kind of an impact where he might be able to nuzzle in the top 10 right now? Not enough. So I, don't, not especially when I've got the, the, almost uh-huh. thirty years of watching action movies, and I've got yeah. that many that I've that I love to death, and all that. Like he wouldn't be in my top ten, like maybe no. top twenty. All right. 30, yeah, maybe? I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's an unfair statement. It is. It's one of those like it's so fresh. It's like nah, you can't put him in there. He, yeah, you got to earn it. You know. Yeah, but exactly. The caliber level is there. So if there were to be a top 10 list for him to crack into, the question is, what would that top 10 list be? Well, me and Paul are going to give you our top 10 list. Um, So what we'll do is we'll just kind of go back and forth. You give me your 10, I'll give you my 10. And if we end up saying someone that's the same, we can just say where we have them uh, in order. So why don't you uh, kick us off, Paul? So we'll start like, we'll start off like I'll say my 10, you say your 10, and then we'll just like go down from there. Or we'll just go back. Like we'll do 10, 10, 9, 9. Yeah, 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 like back and forth. And then before yeah, we get yeah. into the top ten, because I like early on, I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be so easy." Like I was just cruising through, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, "Oh, there are so many people." Mm-hmm. Did you have one or two that you were like, "Oh, I can't believe I'm leaving them off the top 10? 
that more more than a few I've, <laughs> it, it's 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 hard yeah like i could do this today and then like two months from now you could ask me to do the exact same list different. and it might be completely different give me give me two what? that aren't in your top 10 that people might be like oh i'm surprised they weren't in there um okay T- uh one that i considered having in there was robocop <laughs> okay i don't so, hate that so yeah that w- i was i was thinking that but i'm just like uh, there, there are other ones there's actually I'll, in my first one my number 10 one i'll go into oh, go into why i picked that one because i watched the movie recently and i just but, wanted to talk about it but when it's fresh in your head it, it changes the game that's why these yeah, change so often yeah it really does and another one that i didn't include what's another one i didn't include i was going through all this before and then like i have heaps and now that i'm trying to think of a second one that i didn't have so I, I, i'll give you think. one that that might one that i don't think is so for me i'm more i was in more of the mindset that like when i was kind of breaking into my top 10 you had to have multiple movies for that you know for me um so oh, like okay. someone like lorraine uh broughton which is uh charlize theron's character in atomic blonde someone i would mm-hmm. love to have in this top 10 because the action in that movie is phenomenal but like i need to see more like i didn't feel like she had earned it yet but the oh, one that I enough. think people would sit there and go, holy shit, he's not in your top 10? This one killed me too because I love him so much. But Indiana Jones, I, I just bumped out of it. He was like in the top 10 and then I made it a late edition after also recently watching a, a couple action movies. I was like, no, this guy's got to be in there. So Indiana yeah. Jones bumped just out of my list, which like killed me slightly to my core because like, and the other thing I'll say just for me when I was doing this list, I left superheroes and Star Wars characters off just to kind of make mine easier for me. I was like, I need to kind of narrow some of this down. So I, I put did, in two. That's, that, no, that's, 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 that's totally fine because they some of them probably should be. But I was like, if I include them, it's going to be harder. So I left it's, them it's- off. It's really hard. Like, really, I could have done a top 10 list of my favorite action heroes and just have characters played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, like, seriously. <laughs> that's, like, that's, I could do that. It's just hard to pick one. And I just yeah. limited, like, one actor per, like, one actor that I, not, I have, like, having... I have one actor who pops in there twice. He's got two that's characters right. in this. Um, and it's I, my I personal think when, list. What, I think when what you hear him, you'll, you'll understand. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, not having indie because it was, like, indie, Indiana Jones and Star Wars on weekends on like on my television all the time like mm. that those are the action movies i grew up with and then eventually you know when i was allowed to watch the more shooty action movies like the terminator yeah. all those things but it, it did hurt me a little bit to leave indy off but he's not on mine so let's get into the top 10 paul who do you have at number 10 okay so for my t- number 10 this movie i only watched just recently and i'm just like I- i've got to talk about this one i love this one i've watched it many 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 times throughout the decades it's um roddy piper who plays nada in they live oh, so man. have you seen that movie i i john I, carpenter i oh yeah i know of it mm. i have not seen it so um, basically it's about this just regular guy who's just trying to get through life times are hard he's trying to find work um he moves to a new city and he stumbles upon this these glasses that allow him to see that there's aliens that have infiltrated our society and are essentially the ruling class it's the whole thing is like an allegory for like the um the disparity between um different like your social and economic status. Sure. Like they're the, the rich, wealthy people who control everything and everyone else is on the bottom, like struggling to get by it, which I feel is still really relevant yeah, today. So for and sure. we're watching it today. So it's essentially that he finds glasses that lets him fo- see the aliens and he right. stumbles upon this and he tries to help everyone else see. So it's the ma- the main character is called Nada. He's played by Roddy Piper, who is a wrestler. That's amazing. I'm not, in, I, I'm not into wrestling or anything, but <laughs> I grew up like, with a lot of Roddy Piper in in the house, so <laughs> I know I know who I know who the bad man Roddy Piper is. Like he's not like a fantastic actor or anything, but like no. for this role, he's just like an everyday kind of schmuck. He's like the like okay. just the 
like a regular 80s hero. He's wearing the flannel, the flannelette shirt with jeans. He's Love got it. a mullet. <laughs> and he's just like walking around and then like he's taking his shirt off and like he's all, he's so muscular and everything. It's like, <laughs> holy fucking shit. <laughs> it has like one of the most iconic lines. Like you probably would have heard it. Like he walks into this bank and he's like, he, he says, I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> all out of bubble gum. <laughs> so just for I have that heard line that alone, line. Yeah, it's like oh, it's so good. That's and it's that's so fantastic. over the top '80s action. It it's so enjoyable. A lot of the social commentary is very relevant today. I thought. Oh yeah, it's a really good John Carpenter movie, and I I enjoyed it so much. What, I what's the title of the movie? One more time. time. They live. They live. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna have to check this out. Maybe it maybe at really, some point really this weekend. Movie. And. They, the um, other actor um, in it, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but he plays a character called Frank and they get into a disagreement and they just have like this five minute long fist fight. It's just, great. just punching each other, throwing each other oh, around. That's fantastic. He accidentally smashes his car. He's like, oh fuck, I'm sorry, bro. And then they just keep like, beating the crap out of each other it's so good i recommend it bro it's a good one i'm definitely gonna have to take uh, a look at that um so what what you'll all will see is uh new age action has a lot of influence on this list for me so you're gonna see some names that you'd be like huh so low on the list yes so low on the list and (laughs) we're, we're starting my number 10 uh believe it or not is uh none other than john rambo uh sylvester stallone I think it's impossible to have a top 10 list without Rambo on there. I mean, in an action... Unless it's my top 10 list. Uh, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, like, I haven't seen all of the, all the Rambo movies. That's, that's fair. I've and they're seen not, the, they're not I've all seen the first great. one. They're not all yeah. great. The first, the first one is like a really good movie on top of mm. being like a really, really good action movie. But like for me, if an action hero has the ability to rip the throat out of a person's neck... Yeah, you deserve, you deserve a spot on the list, and, and I think Rambo is one of those characters that is easily relatable. Um, you know, whether you know it's you know someone who was a veteran that had gone through, um, you know, Vietnam and stuff like that, where it's like, oh, it, that 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 impact that had that they kind of get into with the psyche stuff. I yeah, like trying to deal with that in everyday life. Yeah, but like even if it's just like, hey, this is a guy who went through some shit. And had some shit happen to him, and he just takes all that as his fuel, and then just directs it at the bad guy. And it's like you can't not pull for a guy like that. And whether you like the movies or not, you know you're always in for a, a, a one or two stretches of action that you're just like, oh man, I didn't know you could do that to a human being with a gun. <laughs> um, whether it be a giant machine gun just literally obliterating a body to nothing, or ripping a throat out of. Uh, a, a person's neck or i mean like even the most recent rambo which i didn't love uh, i had some issues with the story but when you get to the last 30 minutes of that movie you're just like oh yeah rambo's running around in tunnels underground just fucking people up all day long like i'm here for that and out <laughs> like, usually when i look for ways in which like interesting ways in which people are killed in movies i'm usually diving into the horror realm to see really crazy stuff Rambo gives you all the crazy de- things you didn't even know were possible to do to a human being sometime. Uh, and for things like that, and the fact that Sly is one of the most iconic actor, uh, action actors around, uh, Rambo comes in oh, at yeah. 10 for me. Yeah. Um, which yeah. Brings How up- many Rambo movies are there? Ooh, let's see. It- I think it's five or six, maybe seven. Uh, like he's done... He's done three in the last like decade or so, and I think there was three or four yeah. before that. So like, yeah. it's somewhere between six and seven, I think. Somewhere around there. More, if that's more... something I'm gonna get into. I have to commit some time to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, the like the first one, great. The other ones, you just like you'll see some things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number nine. Where where are we going? Right, so so number nine for me is. Martin Riggs, who ah. Mel Gibson played in Lethal, the Lethal Weapon franchise. So Solid choice. Yeah, I just feel like it just got the buddy cop formula done oh, really well, especially in the first movie. I just love like, the banter between like Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, their two characters. Like The movies did get probably progressively worse. As it yeah, went no, along. I mean, that's fair. As, as that 
usually happens with yeah. most franchises. But that buddy cop relationship works. Yeah. Every I grew up in the 90s watching it. Like, I never went to the yeah. movies to go see it because I was too young. But, like, when I was probably eight, nine, ten, I remember watching those movies on oh, TV sure. and coming on all the time and watching and loved them. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just a, a huge... I haven't watched them recently in quite a while. And it's a... It was a... Very, they're all very memorable movies, especially like with the last one when they included Jet Li as the villain. Oh, yeah. And they're trying to kick his heart, so he's just whipping around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's good. Oh, it's great. And I like, I love the crazy factor that Mel brings to, to Rick. Yeah. Like, <laughs> especially in the first one. Oh, my God. Like his introduction with those guys. He's just like, he's. Oh. Like, we've all come to understand now why he's so good at doing things like that because he's. Because he's actually batshit crazy. crazy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like oh. you watch the movie and just like, oh, this is foreshadowing for real life. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you know? uh, but I mean, like one of the most iconic action sequences, I think, is in that first one when he's hanging on that pipe and he's getting electrocuted and he just starts breaking dudes necks with his legs. Like, Yeah, yeah. I, I'm ashamed of myself for not even, like, Briggs didn't even come up on my list. And he should have. Dude, another- dude, it's hard. It it's is hard. hard. There's so 10. many. There's so many. Um, but yeah, no, definitely another movie for me that same thing. Like my mom loved those movies. So those were on TV all the time growing up. And like that, like it's interesting. Cause then that's like, you like for me, like you'll see in my list, like modern action has like just evolved so much where it's like, it's so different than what action was considered mm. back in like the eighties and nineties. Um, yeah. But oh, Riggs so, is, Riggs is an iconic motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, cool. So me, uh, sticking in the realm of iconic, uh, action heroes and probably someone again, who should be higher on my list, but you know, fuck you. If you don't like what I I gotta (laughs) say, that's what I gotta say. Um, I'm bringing Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the other most iconic when it comes to the world of action. Um, and the T 800, uh, the Terminator, uh, from Terminator. Definitely. Uh, Like Uh, that's on my list too. Should we just discuss it? So we don't like, because yeah, so like, when we get to it, so we're just doing the same thing. Sure. Again. So where where do you have Terminator on your list? Number one. <laughs> that, <that's, laughs> see now now uh, see right away people are like yeah yeah this Greek geek he knows what's up. I don't know about the Sea Man anymore. Uh, what well, is he doing? I, did, I I didn't want to do it because I tried to put some things that I think people like not to be too predictable. Yeah. Like, that's why I included they live because i'm like i don't think a lot of people i, I love that i, I love that and i'd love other people to watch it and appreciate yes. it yeah well I'm, and then i'm I, like number one terminator when, terminator when when my list started he he was there you know yeah. um and i mean he's the most iconic action character i i think it's easy no matter where you have him on any list where, wherever you are if you have your own list whatever he's easily the most iconic action hero. When you say action, the first thing you think of is the Terminator. I mean, T2 mm-hmm. oh. is arguably the greatest action movie oh, ever. Yeah, made, yeah. Ever. Definitely. Um, De- definitely. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Jeez. Are, are you sure you don't have margarita in that, that, uh, that glass? Honestly, on, honestly, you really can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I slur my words normally. It's a nightmare. You know, and like, even if at this point in the game, like you've knocked T2 out of the top spot, T2 was on everybody's number one list for mm. decades, man. Yeah, like it, and, and it's it's still on a lot of people's and it, and list it, as the best action movie yeah, of and, all time. And it, it hold like for me, there are two movies from when I was growing up where the visual effects hold up today so well. You would, if someone were to go to you like you didn't know any better and be like, "Oh, that movie was made three months ago," you'd be like, "Yeah, I buy that." It's T2 mm-hmm. and it's Jurassic Park. Like those yeah. two movies, like even oh now, they, like they hold up so well. And the the Liquid Terminator is just like it was a like especially back then. Yeah, nineteen ninety two was it yeah. that came so, out? I think so. Something early nineties. Like yeah, but like just like something you'd never seen before, and you're like, wait, what? Like you could do <laughs> like it's like it's hard to explain this to kids nowadays because yeah, like, you know we believe that a purple alien is a real person when you watch avengers and like thanos is standing right there like yeah. this type of technology it doesn't it it doesn't yeah. have the impact it used to have because it's so good but yeah exactly. watch t2 and, and go it doesn't look like it belongs today because yeah. it does and 
when you're talking action heroes, the Terminator is he's one of the best because he's not the good guy in the first movie. Mm. Then he is the good yeah. guy. Yeah, complete 180. But not because of character or anything, because they yeah. <laughs> sent another... It's essentially a different Terminator, but it's the same they, But it's the same guy, yeah. <laughs> but, like, you know, like, it's one of those where Arnold just is able to play both of those roles so well because he is so physically imposing. And oh, yeah. he's just... Per- like, it was the perfect way to, to, to use this guy with this Austrian accent and like, you know, like he can say everything you need him to say, but it doesn't sound the way you would expect it to sound. And it works perfectly for this robot. And then the action, I mean, whether he's blowing shit up or shooting things or just beating the shit out of him. He's so big. Like everything that you could want in an action hero is there in the T-800. Yeah. I just laugh because like the T-800 is supposed to be like this really sophisticated, like, infiltrator unit unit and like <laughs> so essentially is just this big huge imposing muscly man oh, with yeah. and a heavy austrian accent it's like yep he'll fit right in america oh yeah <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's all the difference. <laughs> um so paul go go more into why he's number one and why he probably should be number one on on all the lists because it's like, one of the best you just, just can't you just can't go past it it's just it's like everything that you want out of an action movie from the 90s you've got this huge muscular man just saying all these awesome one-liners hasta la vista baby i'll be back (laughs) come with me if you want to like and just taking on like so many guys blasting away well not killing all the police like in the second one just blasting them away just this huge machine gun that chase scene with the truck and he's trying to save John Connor on the bike. He has this, like the shotgun. He's using it one hand, shooting it, reloading it, just like the flip of his wrist. It's, I should have rewatched. If I would have (laughs) rewatched that before this list, he probably would be one right now. It is so good. It's just so good. And like, there's no, there's no flaws in that. Like that's one of those perfect Mm. movies. Like people who try to come in and like nitpick or hate on, it's like, shut the fuck up. It's, it's hard. Yeah, it's like when you're reviewing a movie, like you feel like you sometimes do have to bring up negative things, yeah. and then there's like, like you get to a movie and you're just like, uh, I, I, got don't know, I, don't, I don't have anything. I don't have anything for you. <laughs> I did everything I wanted the movie to do. I wonder if nostalgia has anything to do with that. Like we're just looking at it from like a nostalgic point of view. Like I try and look at things objectively, but no, it's, it's I, hard. Like I've grown up watching Terminator ever since I was a kid. So. Oh yeah. <sighs> It's hard I, to beat. It's it, it really is, and I, I'm I'm semi ashamed of myself for allowing me to have so much new age in there and have him so low. But like, I'm just I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with hand to hand combat, and like, because I love oh, yeah. films and stuff. And yeah. that's just the stuff that pops. Where it's like, if I could put on action, that's usually what's gonna win the day. But fuck, is T two so? It's so good. It's so good. It's I like I should have rewatched it before <laughs> I did this list because he definitely would have ended up being higher. Although. I do have someone else from that series that might also appear on this list because I'm, I'm sure, sure it's good. We, it, mo, you know, it, it maybe it might be. Um, <laughs> it might be. So let's go uh, move on now from so, number nine and move to number eight. Uh, what do you have there, Paul? Okay, so number eight, I have Uma Thurman who plays the bride yes. from Kill Bill one and two. Also, also known uh, as Beatrix Kiddo. Uh, who I have yeah. at number five on my list. Oh, well, th- th- there you go. <laughs> Similarities. <laughs> but I just remember this being like one of the first movies where I had like the real, like the real big appreciation yeah. for like the um, Japanese katana as a weapon. Like oh, it yeah. never seemed any more oh, overpowered yeah. and just as like the ultimate sword yeah. back then at least. And just like, her quest for revenge, she'll stop at nothing. She literally takes on like an army of the yeah. Yakuza. Oh yeah. I, I, watched, I watched that she scene just... on repeat the other day, just a few times. So I was like, Oh, it's so pretty. And it's there's just so much pretty. blood, blood everywhere. everywhere at like Classic Tarantino yeah, Quentin Tarantino like... movie is, uh, and just like, it's fantastic. Just taking on all those guys and he's taking on she, she rather she's taking on, Go go that like insane school oh, yeah. girl with like the chain with the yep. ball with the blades on it, oh, yeah. <laughs> swinging that around and stuff. Then killing Lucy Liu, 
chopping her head off with the, her brain appearing at the top. Oh, God, so good. And being able to pull out someone's eye and, yes. like, do the... What's the thing that, that she does and she can I, stop Bill's heart? Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. I, no, I don't either. But, like... Yeah. It is. It's just, like, that was, for me, like, one of those movies where I was like, oh, man. Like, outside of that, I think the only thing I'd seen that looked anything like that when it came to action was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, because it was impossible mm. not to see that movie when it came out. Yeah. But to see it applied in a in a film that wasn't like that that it was like oh this is a tarantino chop sake type movie hmm. like it was just i'd never seen action like in that way uh, from an eastern movie where i was just like what and same thing like we, we were talking before how you know people like tom cruise and keanu have elevated the the game on being in all of the action scenes all the time very little stunt double work before that was a thing, like Uma Thurman does a shitload of her stuff in the movie, and it that stuff pays off because it's like I appreciate it more when I know the person I've been riding with this whole movie for is doing most of the action, yeah. and it's yeah. she's so badass. Like, like you said, like what she can do with a katana, you just yeah. sit there and you're like, oh wow, <laughs> oh it's so good. It is. It's like. And I can appreciate as well, like when the actors are doing the stunts and like the choreography themselves, because it, it is extremely hard. Like oh, I used to train wow. martial arts. I used to do Taekwondo and kickboxing, Jiu Jitsu. Oh, wow. it's, it's, it's hard. Like it's not choreographed fire or anything, but no. just being in that kind of physical shape to be able to pull off those choreographed moves and, ke- and keep doing it. You'd probably have to do take after take oh, after yeah. take at a time to take. And like, I have there's a so much appreciation. There's so much wire work in that movie. Like, you know mm. that, that like that's the, like you you know those harnesses are uncomfortable and to be able yeah, to make yeah. it look so seamless like the action is flowing correctly and it looks right even though you're there's wires and things in the way like yeah it's like a good homage to like a lot of um eastern style especially hong kong cinema where it's yeah. like wire foo i think they called it and it's just like they're on wires they're jumping around <laughs> and basically flying around oh yeah and like and fighting each other and it, like that type like when you just see that in the movie like i have more appreciation for the film for the work that goes into it and those action sequences are just i'm sure quentin would tell you that like they're not like he i think kill bill 2 he really was starting to find like the groove in how to get those movies but like i don't care even if he like might not love all of it like it just all looks so good all the time and I love throwing those movies on because Uma Thurman kicks so much ass. She does. Fantastic. Um, well, that's cool. all I got to say on that one. Yeah, me too. Uh, good old Beatrix Kiddo. Uh, number eight uh, for Paul. Number five for me. My number eight um, is is none other than Die Hard himself, Mr. John McClane. Of course. You know, I, I was... I did, that's not That one's not on my list, but Damn it! Like, it's I'm like, can I have a top ten list with that? Yeah, John McClane, really? Again, <laughs> it's it's another one of those film franchises that like was always on TV when I was growing up. Yeah, and, like, yeah. The first time you see John McClane walk across that floor of glass, oh, you it's like you've seen it, so no, many. Yeah. Action, <laughs> like you've seen so many action movies where like people jump through windows, or I mean, even now, like yeah. up and like it always drives me nuts when someone lands on glass and gets up and they're not bleeding. Yeah. Over hands or their bodies somewhere yeah and that was the first time i was like oh walking on glass yes. sucks yeah. <laughs> you know of course it does it, it's just like uh, that i die hard is just one of my all-time favorites and like you just love mclean because again someone you can relate to he's easily relatable like yeah it, and just the fact that he will stop at nothing to do what he has to do you know specifically a bunch of the movies it usually involves him saving his family um yeah <laughs> yeah honorable i haven't seen all the movies um i think I've, I've, i think i've only seen one and two but i haven't seen any further than that so that's kind of why i didn't yeah, they start this bringing, like i haven't seen all the movies fair. in the franchise i mean and the, the action just uh, it's one of those franchises that eight like action wise kind of was going with what was going on at the time. So like when you get to the back half of the, the, the die hard movies, the action is ludicrous. Like mm. oh, I, think yeah. it's, I think it's die. Hard. I think it's the fourth one. Maybe, maybe the fifth one. Like there's a sequence where he's like literally on top of a giant, like 
aircraft that's mm-hmm. spinning around shooting shit knocking down like roads and overpasses. I've definitely said I've seen that. Like I've seen like, the action sequences the action from the gets ridiculous and it maybe doesn't age as well for the movies because I think there was such a grittiness and realism to those yeah, early ones. Yeah, it was more that, contained like, with the first one. Yeah, like the absurd action just doesn't always fit. But you yeah, gotta well, respect an action hero that can, you know, hang yeah. with the times. And yeah. McLean, he's always put in crazy situations. And it's usually the, I, I like the ingenuity and the on the spot genius thinking that like McLean is able to do in most of those movies to get him in and out of situations that sometimes you're like, how are you going to get out of this one, John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the script and lots of plot armor. That's usually how. Right. <laughs> But Alan Rickman was great, like in the first one as well, with like it, it, the vil- uh, Hans, Hans Gruber. Gruber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the most iconic villains in any movie ever. I, uh, so like, yeah. he's he's so good. Um, and and I, I think that also always helps too when you have uh, when your hero has to go up against a villain that that matches what they are. And that's certainly I is, love a good villain. A good one. villain is. Real is what I really want to get out of a lot of movies. Yeah, I mean, like it's... The... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just like, well, it's just like, I think I a lot of the times I enjoy villains a lot more than I do heroes I for some do, reason. Me too. I, I... I just find them so much more interesting. Cool, and like, you'll, you'll, you'll hear like different actors. Like, I was listening to a, a podcast where Kevin Smith was talking to uh, a guy who was on The Flash who was playing a good guy for like a whole long chunk of time. And then all of a sudden was revealed to actually be this bad guy. And he was like, yeah. so what do you prefer to play? He's like, I'm not going to lie. You have a lot more fun with the bad guys. Like yeah. a lot of times <laughs> your hero, like unless your hero is someone like John McClane or Martin Riggs, where they're a little bit more of a loose cannon. Yeah. You kind of yeah. get boxed. Almost into, kind of like a, a anti-hero. Kind yeah. Of, like you, you, you kind of get boxed, <laughs> you get boxed into this, like, well, I can only do this, this or this because that's what the good guy does. Yeah, bad exactly. guys can do whatever the fuck they want because they're mm-hmm. bad and they can and be that's more fun. And that's you know, I mean, I mean, going superhero wise, like I think one of the biggest problems you could argue with early on Marvel was that oh yeah, the villains weren't great. You they know, were. and the movies progressively get so much better when all of a sudden a really good villain is inserted. Like yeah, I, I actually don't hate Thor: The Dark World because it's a fantastic Loki movie. That, like, that, well, if that's you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Loki's like the only thing I think that works in that movie because I enjoy watching him scheme and connive and trick people. Um, but yeah, like it, it just, movies are so much better when you have a villain that like you either understand the threat that mm-hmm. they impose or like the, the method to their madness needs to make sense. Yeah, when you have someone who has all that going for them. You're just like, oh, it's like this is so much better. Like, because yeah, Dylan is legitimately so good, and that's Hans Gruber is one of the best. Um, yeah. So yeah, John McClane at number eight for me. Um, all right, which brings us to number seven. So number seven for me, I've got Brian Mills. From okay. Taken serious, yes. Liam Neeson. Yeah. He almost another one that almost made it onto mine, and I just I left him off. Um, yeah. But I, I totally understand why he would be anywhere on any list because fuck, if those movies yeah. are great. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Just like, just um, just the just the basic revenge plot. He's gonna go save his daughter. Has I don't even really remember. Like with the later ones, second one. His what? No, was the third one? His wife gets taken. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Third one, his wife gets. No, no. I'm not even remembering these correctly. I don't don't remember them correctly either. (laughs) But pretty much, if you take a family member from Brian Mills, he's going to hunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Real hard. You don't do that because you've got that (laughs) iconic line too, where he's like, "Like, yeah, I'm a man with a particular set of skills. Blah 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 blah. I will find you and I will kill you." (laughs) Just that in itself. It's just, enough to be on the top 10 for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You need quotable lines in an action movie. I think that, you like know, that's, that's a good point. That's not something that I thought of. And you'll see, I don't think anyone in the top three for me has real quotable lines. Well, I don't need it. I just think <laughs> it, it's, I a, it's, a, 
it, it adds to the, the iconic 80s. level. Yeah. Oh, for sure. With you had to have a tagline. Eighties movies, you had people saying one-liners all the time, and it kind of feels like that needs to be a kind of a staple for action movies that you're. Not, it's nowhere near as cheesy or anything nowadays oh, as yeah, what, no. it, <laughs> what it used to be. But then again, it could be That's like a good, it's a great point. Cheesy, it's so cheesy, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> No, I mean, and that's a that's an excellent point, especially like coming out of that era of movies. Like, you, you didn't make an action movie if you didn't have some quippy lines that like were easy to quote, like out and about. Yeah, yeah, like Arnold Schwarzenegger in every single movie that he's, that he's in. So <laughs> Literally many. all, because he can only say so many. Well, I mean, early on, it was like he could only say so many things super clearly. It was like just give us that line. That yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love him um, so much. But back to Brian Mills, yes, like Brian I like, I liked his um, like they wish they were really good at showing his like absolute like he really was a man of his word. Like oh, he yeah. did have those skills to back up those words. Like he could take down anyone. But like my only issue with those movies is that the editing for the fight sequences, particularly the hand hand, isn't mm. that good. Yeah, I think the shootouts are a lot better. But the hand the hand to hand stuff, I didn't think was that great. And it's it's but funny because go ahead. No, you. I was, I was I was just gonna say like, but like Liam Neeson for me wasn't really a big action star until no. these movies. Like yeah. he wasn't really considered an action star at no. all. I don't think before these movies. But most action I think you probably would have had him with would have been Qui Gon Jinn. Yeah. Taken. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it no, definitely he definitely wasn't. wasn't. Schindler's List. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Dude, it's it's crazy. Like how that one movie all of a sudden now that's all Liam Neeson is known for is like, yeah, oh, whatever the, yeah. the, the, the good or bad action movie of the summer is going to be Liam Neeson will probably pop up into it. Yeah. But, yeah. And I really liked it cause he's an older character as well. Like he's oh, yeah. not, he's not in and, his prime anymore, but no. he has to rely on his knowledge and the skills that he's acquired before. And even with the first movie I liked as well, like he, they won his like old army buddies or whatever one did they, we're like, oh, come on, this job is just guarding this pop star or whatever. Yeah, it's gonna be easy, nothing to worry about. And he's reluctant at first, and he eventually does it. And then something shit does happen. He just ta- and it like shuts that shit down so quickly. And everyone's yeah. like, holy fuck, glad you were here, dude. And just yeah, it's and it's like for me, like Taken's one of those movies. And it's funny because like when I was putting my list together, I was like pulling up a bunch of clips and things on YouTube just to like give me some refreshers on things. And I remember like where I was when Taken came out and like what it was like to see that movie in the theater at the time. Cause you hadn't seen a lot of movies, like maybe the Bourne movies were kind of doing some of the stuff that was going on this, but like you didn't see at least on like the Eastern side of movies, like a lot of that, like quick hand to hand combat and like, I'm going to disable somebody like really, really fast. And it again was such a shock to see coming from Liam Neeson. It was like, yeah, pop. It popped so hard. That was like, Oh, dude! I remember like the action in those movies were awesome. Like the way he dismantles people, and like you said, I went back and I was rewatching this clip, and like now that I've been spoiled by John Wick and movies like that, like <laughs> the editing on these fights are not as good as yeah. I remember them. Like no the things it's... happen, but the camera work is like you're like no, pull pull out a little bit. Like let me see it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, maybe not put so many cuts in. Maybe just let the take hold for a bit longer. That'd be yeah. nice. Yeah, you know, but nevertheless like especially like because we were talking before we started recording like you think about these things that's like the impact that the character can have on you can propel you up into a top 10 and that was one of those movies where like boom brian mills came on the scene yeah. you're like do not fuck with that guy yeah 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 exactly yeah that's why it's pretty much why he's on my list <laughs> <laughs> it's I, and uh you know and like you said like i love i love the revenge storylines and when they're executed yeah. so well i mean that one it's just like you you can't not pull for that guy the whole movie because you're like yeah no go fuck all those guys up yeah 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 uh, and he did <laughs> that that he did um cool so um brian mills at uh number seven for you number seven for me uh yep. features that other character from the terminator movies i put sarah connor above oh 800 because Sarah Connor is a badass bitch. And honestly, the reason that she's as high as she is on my list is the reaction that you have to her in the newest Terminator movie. Like, mm-hmm. 
I got some problems with that movie and it's not great. I think everyone had problems with that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it, did, it did one thing in particular, it, like right at the beginning where I was like, well, now what are we going to do for a movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah they killed john connor spoilers people in case you forgot oh yeah uh, it came dark, out dark fate they, yeah, people it, it, should. No, surely they should but you know <laughs> you watch someone will be like how could you say that it, yeah spoilers john connor is killed in like the first 10 minutes of the new terminator movie and you're like i thought that was the whole point of the movie yeah but the thing that saved at least the viewing and like i was like well you know it was worth seeing sarah connor man like the minute she shows up in that fucking car and whips out that grenade launcher and the just, grenade launcher like, whatever it was yeah <laughs> like she's one of the most badass female action characters in any movie ever and for her to fall out of the light you know in doing those for so long and then come back and like just the same impact she had in those early yeah. terminator movies she's so badass and like she is. to to go up against the terminator you know, in the first movie, like you gotta be a badass. Mm-hmm. And Sarah mm-hmm. Connor, oh, she just she does it for me in a way where I'm like, <laughs> so, so, that sounded way dirtier than I wanted it to sound. <laughs> um, but I mean, if 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 Sarah Connor doesn't make you think a couple of dirty thoughts, there's probably <laughs> she, she's she's the type of badass that you're like. It's just the most attractive thing about that character. <laughs> All of her action is just great. Like whether she's on the motorcycle or, you know, just jumping out of cars that are moving and it just works. And there's something about the opposite side of the Terminator that for me, I just always thought worked a little bit better. I am so disappointed. I didn't put her on my list now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, don't I please. just love her. I just love her from like, from just the difference in her character between one and two mm-hmm. in one she's just like she's just a regular girl just working a job just doing your everyday thing and then she's just all of a sudden finds out that she is one of the most important people in history that's going to give birth to john connor yeah. the savior of humanity in the future and then she's just propelled into this whole thing against her will and then we see her in number one having to be saved by a coral race he's the reason yep. that she survives and everything like that and then in Terminator 2, completely One different lady. character. Oh, yeah. She's a lot more muscular. She's been working out. And then put in an insane asylum, which is a <laughs> bit of a setback. You but know. she talked, she um, came into contact with people that knew how to handle weapons. She prepared herself so she yeah. could prepare John Connor for the future. Yeah, one of the one it's... of the most bad, <laughs> not, not, not just one of the most badass um, action characters, female characters but one of the best action, action characters yeah. full stop oh for for yeah. sure and uh, it's that aspect like you just pointed out like about her character like she's kind of thrown into this world mm-hmm. in the first one but they never have her be the mary sue you know like she's always able yeah. to hold her own and when mm-hmm. she does even though she struggles because she's learning like you believe that like she can do the things that she's able to do and then when she comes into t2 man she's just like I'm ready to fuck some people up. Like this, yeah. I, would be, yeah. I would be that person. Yeah. Like you buy it. Like when you, when you've experienced what she's experienced by the time you get to T2, you would expect Sarah Connor to be there. And then when oh, she yeah, is, exactly. she's everything you would hope that she would be being the badass action hero. Yeah. Who's got some experience now. Lo- and kudos to Linda Hamilton, who <sighs> was able to pull that off too. Jeez. Just being able to do that complete 180 and characterization and be able to do it well. Oh yeah. And like I said, and like the, the, like the fact that she could reprise the role so many years later and come in still and got it. still, yeah. Like the minute she shows up, you're like, all right, even if the rest of this movie is shit, Linda Hamilton is kicking <laughs> ass again. And I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think I heard too many people complaining about Linda Hamilton in the, in no, I, th- I think that's the only thing people really enjoyed. Yeah. Didn't like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger so much. Oh, I liked Arnold Schwarzenegger, but just his character. Of yeah, it was Bob. weird. But Although he, he, does have that, that. We'll, he does have that badass scene on the, the, the airplane wing when he's he does like do. shooting the shit out of that guy's. Oh. He has his moments. He can still. He has his fall, moments. He do, like, for me, like he doesn't pop in that movie the way Linda Hamilton pops in that movie. Yeah, um, makes up for and it. for me, that's what gave her the edge to sneak in, you know, to uh, the number, what was that, seven spot for me. So now... Seven spot for you. On to number six we go. And where are we going, Paul? Number six for me 
so we are going to Marvel, but Ooh. not MCU Marvel Blade. How? Oh. Uh, oh, hang on. I just got a thing. I just got my internet connection unstable. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're still here. And, and I believe you said we're going to Blade, oh, okay. which I, I was like. A- Ooh. We are, we are. So, sorry, just as soon as I said that, it said internet connection unstable, but it looks like it's resolved. Yeah, I think, I think you're back in your yeah. now. Yeah, but just oh, so good. The action, just Wesley Snipes, I think is perfectly, not that I know that much about the Blake character in the comics, but I think he's perfectly cast mm-hmm. as this character, just taking on vampires and just the way he just like, <sighs> nonchalantly just does it as well like yeah. you know he's like dealed with fucking heaps of vampires <laughs> before and just takes them down and doesn't just takes them down just with a smile oh yeah <laughs> and the opening scene with the first one where he's just with that um dance that nightclub oh um, god and just fucking up the vampires in his introduction introducing us to that world oh and yeah just how much of a badass he is <sighs> movies are and so of course bad. the fight choreography as well wesley snipes has done karate before and so i think he's done most of the choreography and i'm not sure about the stunts but he's done a lot of that himself oh yeah which i think really shows him is really good and it's good when he knows how to do it oh for it's sure. just so good it's just I watched it a lot as a teenager, and I've got the trilogy somewhere around here. I don't yeah. know where I put it, but <laughs> I did too. Yeah, but I've. It's just one of those. Like, say what you will about. Like, I reckon Blade One and Two are fantastic. I think Blade Two is better than the first one. It's fair. Three, it's it's not not good. No, no, <laughs> I'll, but I'll admit. I'll, I'll 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 still suit up to to go watch Wesley Snipes kick ass, whether the movie's yeah. good or bad. Yeah, it's. It was fantastic, and it's just one of those iconic ones, especially when I was in my teens. I loved it so much. Oh, yeah. Like, when my, even so much that my e- early email address that I had when I was a teenager, it was Paul Blade, as in I put Blade because I loved it so much. That's, I love which, that. Which, in hindsight, is just dumb. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fantastic. I love That's a nice little tidbit. Yeah. It's yeah, it's just one of those Marvel, those earlier Marvel movies that I love so much. I yeah, just enjoy it, even if it is just for the action. It's one of the it, that movie is one of the reasons I was like, I'm just gonna leave superheroes off my list because I would want to put them all in. And the thing that I I feel like everyone like overlooks with Blade, I don't know if we have a world where superhero movies work or exist without that movie. Because Batman and Robin pretty much killed the superhero movie. Oh, yeah. They disappeared yeah, for a while. To that, isn't it? After that movie. Like, that movie happened, and then people were like, maybe we shouldn't make superhero movies. And, like, X Men is usually the one I think a lot of people think of as, like, oh, yeah. the return of the superhero movie. But Blade came first. Yeah, that and was two. No, 1998? Eight? Yeah, eight, eight nine, eight, somewhere nine. there. Yeah, I think yeah. it's one of those two. Um, like yeah like that was the first one and it's like people forget that it's a comic book movie because it's a vampire movie and that was that was always the big draw for me i love vampire anything Mm -hmm. like i'm a big vampire guy and one it was like the vampires are cool as shit in those movies but then the action is just like you sit there and you watch wesley snipes just kicking shit and the leather jacket and the like everything about all of the action that movie is on point whether it's the stylistic choices to make the action look cool to the actual mm-hmm. choreography and execution and the character you just you, it's, the, it's the wesley snipes character for me that like is i think wesley snipes and i go boom played um and yeah yeah that that movie saved the superhero movie i think for you know the like i don't know if you get x-men or the spider-man movies without blade working mm. But you're definitely right. People do forget this one. Even even me, because I reviewed the first X-Men not too long ago and I attributed X-Men to being the one that kind of put superhero movies back on the map. I mean, it, 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 definitely, it definitely plays a big factor in superhero movies coming back. Like that one-two combo. Oh, yeah. Because Blade isn't the traditional superhero movie. It's more of a horror no. movie. No. Um, it's not what you would expect the Marvel movie to be, which I can't wait to see what the MCU they, does Yeah, they're play. going to do their own interpretation of the character, which would be yeah. really interesting to see. Because I, I, I w- that, like, 
what like most of the other Marvel franchises that exist, I think if given to Paul or to Kevin Feige, he's going to do better than what we've seen in the past. Whether yeah. that's Spider Man, whether that's when he finally gets X Men or Fantastic Four. Blade I'm intrigued by because the thing that works the best with Blade is the rated R aspect of mm-hmm. the Blade movies. Oh yeah. I don't and I know that we're gonna get the rated R Deadpool movies at some point because you're not gonna waste that cash flow. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how Marvel tiptoes their way into rated R. And if you do Blade, I think it's got to be an R movie. And oh, definitely. If, it, if it is, I am stoked to see what Mahershala Ali could do with yeah. that character. Yeah, because I'm so keen to see it. If it's if it's not Wesley Snipes, that's the guy that I think <laughs> is the guy to play it. Did you know they did a Blade TV series as well? Yes, that, I do. That I vaguely remember my that. Friend, my friend introduced it to me. I don't even think I got through the first disc <laughs> of, the se- of the first season. <laughs> I, I remember when that came out, I was like, ooh, interesting. I don't know if I could buy somebody that's not Wesley Snipes' Blade, but maybe. Like, I'll get and it. turns out. And I never checked it out because it didn't, it didn't, no, nobody talked about it. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not missing anything. It was probably about 10 years ago now that I watched it, I think. But, like, I remember nothing from it. But I just remember being just... It's just so... Because you have Wesley... Like, Wesley... Like, you can't picture really picture anyone else's Blade. Because no, Wesley Snipes not. is iconic as that character. And having anyone else, it just feels... It just feels wrong. Yeah, too, like, I almost would have been like, you know what, Kevin Feige? Make, make the strong decision and bring Wesley Snipes back. Like, just, he's not in jail. He's trying yeah. to get back into the... Yeah, he's not in jail now. You know, like... <laughs> You know, he's hanging out with Eddie Murphy and he's popping into movies here and there. Like, bring Wesley back. I bet you if yeah. he's some training, he could still kick ass. But Apparently, he's hard to work with, though. I, you I've know heard, that? That's I've not heard that he's, Yeah, that he's, been, that he's been very hard to work with. So that... I, 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 I've... At least the feeling I get for most of the people that Feige hires, pretty much all, outside of, like, the, taking the shot, and that was more Favreau than anybody with Downey Jr., but... You never get the 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 feeling that anybody on those sets doesn't get along with everybody. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So like you do, and I think Mahershala Ali will fit that mold real well. And I think he's got the look for sure. And I, I like oh, yeah. the the taller version of him could be very interesting. Um, I mean, I, I trust in in Feige. I trust all times. Um, but it will yeah. be. I, I think it'll be interesting to see that character taken over by somebody else and done by Marvel. I'll be interested to see if they go R or not or what they do with that movie because I hope they do. You got you got to get bloody and gory yeah, and vampire just with all the sword play and stuff. Yeah, and just like, and vampires. Oh, all the weapons that he has too. Oh, so many like weapons. Like the sword, he's got those bloody uh they're not batarangs. They're just like th- like throwing star things that yeah. fly around and he ca- and he catches them again that like uh, knife with the cord, a kunai or whatever it is, and he swings yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. that around. Oh, he's, he's got the gauntlet with the thing that injects oh the garlic God, straight that's right. yeah, that's so right. Just a variety of weapons. So I forgot about all the can, weapons. The way he can like decapitate people and just make them explode with the garlic, and he has like silver stuff as well. It's, it's, it's just, and you can like do it in so many different ways. It has yeah. to be all right. They have that, to do it. Ha- it has to be. It, yeah. I, I can't imagine doing anything other than that. Um, oh, damn, dude, Blade, well, well done. Blade is an excellent, <laughs> excellent choice. Um, so number six for me, uh, it will be the first time that Mr. Keanu Reeves is on our list. It will not be the last time. Um, uh, but Neo from the Matrix, um, uh, yeah, my number six. Um, whether you like those second or third Matrix movies or not, the character I is in badass. I enjoy the second one. I do too. But it's just for the action, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Like, and that's the thing. Like, we're we're talking action heroes, so mm-hmm. I, I'm okay if the movie is eh, as long as the action is on point. The third one, yeah, not Let's not, not so much. We, we'll, we'll, we won't talk about that one. But I mean, like, you want to talk about the movie that changed the game? It it, it one of the movies has got to be the Matrix. Um, just from the visual standpoint and the things that, um, oh no, now I'm blanking on. Uh, they used to be brothers, and now they're sisters. What? Um, who are the directors? Uh, the, Wachowski. the Wachowskis. Wachowskis. I can't remember their first name, but they're just always referred to as the Ch- Wachowski yeah. brothers. But now I guess it's Wachowski, Wachowski sisters. Brother and sister. 
Um, yeah, no, but the, which, like just what they did from a visual standpoint with that movie, like mind blowing stuff like you'd never seen in action before. Oh. Uh, the iconic use of slow mo um, and, and and purposeful use of slow motion. Like, yeah, and to, wire work as well. Like to, yeah, like to be able to do that stuff and like, oh, I'm not just being slow mo to be cool, like say a Zack yeah. Snyder. And I love Zack Snyder. Oh, um, I, yeah. But he yeah. does. I mean, th- like, there's like a Twitter account that's like perfect Zack Snyder shots because he has yeah. so many perfect images. But like, Snyder Cut. Yeah, oh, dude. He's coming. Dude, I cannot <laughs> wait. Like, give me Dark Side now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. Oh man, I'm so sorry to jump in right there. I mean, you could feel the the, the the energy and the excitement to talk about the Snyder Cup and have a little tangent from our conversation. Very palpable. You want to know where it's going? Well, you're going to have to come back next week because we're cutting you off this week, man. Uh, save some of the goodies uh, for the second half of our conversation with the Greek geek himself as we talk Snyder Cut briefly and then dive into our top five uh, all-time favorite action characters um so that's it though for this week uh, i hope that you enjoyed uh this episode uh of the margarita monday meetup um with the greek geek uh, i had so much fun talking to him uh the second half of the conversation just as fun as the first half um so until next week, man, uh, that's all we have to say. So now I want to know what you're thinking, man. Uh, what do you think of Extraction? Uh, was it a movie that you liked, disliked? How's the action rank? Do you see the comparisons that you can make to things like John Wick or Atomic Blonde or the kind of more modern uh, action era? Um, what was working or not working for you there? Um, and then give us, you know, your 10 through uh, 6 uh, of all-time action heroes. Uh, you know, how how are we doing uh, with what you would think? Uh, is the C-Man way off base with some of the people he's putting toward the bottom of his list some of the curveballs the greek geek give you uh catch you off guard go huh well interesting or are you like right on board like hey i like the way you guys are thinking anything you're thinking what your list would look like um where we went wrong where we went right all of it can go down below in the comments section as always if you enjoyed this video and the conversation we had uh with the greek geek today please give us a thumbs up and as always if you're new you want to come hang out with the c-man and you know know when we drop uh, our episode next week to see the second half of this conversation show some love man jump over there hit the subscribe button hit the little bell that follows if you want the alert the minute those videos go up uh, you can get those with that little bell um also jump down uh in the description find uh you know paul and the greek geek stuff um for youtube instagram twitter down below man go show him some love if you liked uh hearing you know what he had to say and until next time man next week uh we finish our conversation with paul um it's a lot of fun i hope you'll come back and join us but until then for the c-man's cinema sit down i've been the c-man i'm signing off peace well that's all live and breathe you still here check out a video like this one or this one and Hit the subscribe button so you can get alerts and check out everything the C-Man's got at the cinema sit down.